Today we're going to learn how to find all the roots of a polynomial. By the end of this video you should be able to find all the roots of a polynomial as well as write an equation of a polynomial given any type of root. So last class we learned how to find all of the rational roots of a polynomial using synthetic division and factoring. But as you saw last class sometimes you can't always factor that quadratic that you end up with. So when we did quadratics, we learned two other methods for solving. We could complete the square or use quadratic formula. So on this first example, we're asked to find all of the zeros of this polynomial. Now last class, I had you write out all the factors of the constant and the factors of the coefficient and do synthetic division to see which roots worked. Well, now that we've already shown that you know how to use the rational roots theorem, I'm going to show you a shortcut using the graph. So if you grab your calculator, we're going to go to y equals and type in our equation. So we have x cubed minus 5x squared minus 7x plus 51. And we're going to look at our graph and try to find the rational roots from the graph. So our graph only crosses the x-axis once, and that's at negative 3. So instead of having to use the rational roots theorem and find all of those possible roots and test them with synthetic division, we're just going to go ahead and do our synthetic division with negative 3, because that is clearly a root from the graph. And I'll draw my L for synthetic division and write in the coefficients. Then I'll just do synthetic division. Bring down the 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and add. We ended up with a remainder of 0, which is what we want. So now if I write out the quadratic, we have x squared minus 8x plus 17. And then we want to solve this quadratic. So clearly there are no numbers that multiply to 17 and add up to negative 8. So we either need to use quadratic formula or completing the square. I'm going to go ahead and use completing the square with this problem. You could use either. So just as a reminder, if you're completing the square, the first step is to move the constant to the other side of the equation. If we had an a value other than 1, we would need to divide everything by a. But a is 1, so we don't have to worry about that step. The next step is to do b, which is negative 8, divided by 2, which gives us negative 4, and square it, which is 16. Then we're going to add 16 to both sides. Then I can factor the left side of the equation and simplify the right side. Then I can take the square root of both sides. Remember that the square root of negative 1 is i. Then I can add 4 to both sides. So from completing the square, I get 4 plus or minus i as my roots, and then from synthetic division, I know that x is also negative 3. Now, we can check our answers on the calculator. Remember how to use the PolySimult app? Go to Apps, PolySimult, Polynomial Root Finder. Now, order is the same thing as degree. So we have a cubic, so the degree is 3. 
we always want it to be in A plus B I mode. That way it'll give us complex solutions. Then we just type in all of our coefficients, exactly how we wrote them for the synthetic division. So I have 1, negative 5, negative 7, and 51. That gives me negative 3, 4 plus i, and 4 minus i, which is what we got from doing all the algebra. Let's take a look at another problem. So again, we have a cubic. I'm going to go to the graph to find one of my rational roots. So I have x cubed minus 6i squared plus 9x minus 2. So we can see that the graph crosses the x-axis in three places. There's some decimal, maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4, something around that, 2, and then 3.8 or something like that. So we're going to go with the obvious one, which is 2. The other two we'll figure out after we do quadratic formula or completing the square. But let's do our synthetic division with 2. Bring down the 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and add. So again, we end up with the remainder of 0, which is what we want. So the quadratic we're left with is x squared minus 4x plus 1. So this is not going to be factorable. We could use either quadratic formula or completing the square. I'm going to go ahead and use quadratic formula with this one. That way, we can practice using both completing the square and quadratic formula. So if we're using quadratic formula, recall that the formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And a, b, and c are my coefficients. a, b, c. So I can go ahead and do the discriminant which is the part inside the square root, b squared minus 4ac. Which gives me 16 minus 4, which is 12. So when I plug it into the formula, I get positive 4 plus or minus square root of 12 over 2 times 1. The square root of 12 can be simplified because 4 is a perfect square, and that is a factor of 12. So it'll simplify to 2 square root of 3. And remember, we always need to draw this heart at the end and see if we can simplify those. All of the numbers in the heart can be divided by 2. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We end up with 2 plus or minus square root of 3. And then from the synthetic division, we had that x equals 2. And we can check our answers using the app just like we did on the previous problem. So a couple other theorems to be aware of. We have the complex conjugate theorem. We use the word conjugate in our quadratics unit. The complex conjugate theorem says that if a plus bi is a zero of a polynomial, then a minus bi is also a zero. The irrational conjugates theorem is similar. It says if a plus square root of b is a zero, then a minus square root of b is also a zero. And this makes sense if you think about the methods we have for solving quadratics. If you use the quadratic formula, there's a plus or minus built into that formula. And if you complete the square, you end up 
putting a plus or minus in when you take the square root of both sides. So if you are given some of the zeros of a polynomial, you can determine some of the other zeros. So here, if we know that 3 is a 0 and we know that 2 plus square root of 5 is a 0, we also know that 2 minus square root of 5 is a 0. We do not know that negative 3 is a 0 because the theorems only refer to complex numbers and irrational numbers. 3 is an integer, so that does not apply. If we look at the next problem, we know that 5i is a 0, so negative 5i is a 0. And since we know that 3 minus 4i is a 0, 3 plus 4i is also a 0. And in problem number 5, 7 minus 2i is a 0, and 1 plus 3 squared of 2 is a 0. So, last class we talked about writing the equation of a polynomial if you are given the rational zeros. Now, to find the factors for irrational and complex zeros, we are going to uncomplete the square. So we're going to do the process of completing the square backwards, starting with the roots and ending up with the quadratic. So if we know that 4, 1 plus square root of 5, and 1 minus square root of 5 are zeros of a polynomial, we can figure out what that polynomial is. Let's ignore the 4 for right now and let's work with the 1 plus or minus square root of 5. So if we think of this as an answer to a completing the square problem. We have x equals 1 plus or minus square root of 5. Now I'm going to flip back to the first problem where we completed the square and refer back to those steps as we're reversing this process. So here we ended up with 4 plus or minus i. If we go back one step, we want to move the number out front back to the other side of the equation. And then the step before that is taking the square root. So we're going to do the opposite of that, which is squaring. So first thing I'm going to do is move the 1 to the other side of the equation. Then I'm going to square both sides. Remember, that when you square a binomial, x minus 1 squared, you are doing x minus 1 times x minus 1. You cannot distribute the square. That's not how things work. So if I do x minus 1 times x minus 1, I get x squared minus x minus x plus 1. So I have x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals, and then square root of 5 squared is just 5. Then I want to move the 5 back to the other side and set it equal to 0. So x squared minus 2x minus 4 is the quadratic that will give me 1 plus or minus square root of 5 as my factors. So we're going to take that and we know that our other 0 is 4, which means that our other factor is x minus 4. And we're going to multiply those two factors together to get our polynomial. So if we distribute the x to the quadratic, and then if we distribute the negative 4 to the quadratic, and combine our like terms, we end up with our function. 
And again, you can check your answers by plugging that cubic into the app and seeing if you get the correct roots. Let's do one more problem. If we have 2i and 3 minus square root of 3 as our roots, well, these both have conjugates that are going to be our roots. So we have plus or minus 2i and plus or, or 3 plus or minus square root of 3 as our roots. So we're going to have to uncomplete the square with both of these. So let's start with plus or minus 2i. So we don't have a number in front of the plus or minus to move over. So we can just go ahead and square both sides. So x squared is just x squared. When you square the 2i, you have to square the 2 and the i. We all know that i squared equals negative 1. And then we just add 4 to both sides to set it equal to 0. So that's our first um, quadratic. Then we can uncomplete the square with the next set of factors. So we need to subtract 3 from both sides. Square both sides. Remember, you have x minus 3 times x minus 3, which gives you x squared minus 6x plus 9. And the square root of 3 squared is just 3. Then you subtract 3 from both sides. So I'm going to use x squared plus 4 and x squared minus 6x plus 6. Multiply those together to get my final answer. So if I distribute x squared to the second set of parentheses, and then distribute 4, to the second set of parentheses. Then all I need to do is combine my like terms. So I end up with x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 10x squared minus 24x plus 24 as my function. And again, you can check this in the app. You just have to make sure that you change the order to 4 because this is a 4th degree polynomial.